So I ended up cheating and using a plasma cutter to get to the back side of it. Don't think it really mattered too much. One of the holes is gonna be cockeyed anyway, so I'm, I'm not too worried about how it looks because it's gonna be covered up anyways. So I cheated, went that way. Total time invested, about 25 minutes compared to hours fighting the other side. Yay. We plan on putting the booster on upside down to get this piece away from the valve cover as much as possible. So in order to do so, you have this one weird hole that's out of the middle of nowhere. So you have to have someone hold the brake booster up into the other holes and then mark with a sharpie where the new hole is going to be drilled. That's how easy it is. So I bought a 1500 master cylinder that can go on because I wanted it over on this side instead of trying to bend the, the hoses down and around and all that good stuff. But then I realized that if I take this one off, okay, just put it off out of the way, and put this one back on, which is the new one, it looks great. Any problem is, yeah, that's sticking up over the hood. That just isn't going to fit. So, needless to say, as much as I want to use that, I don't think I'm going to be able to use that. I'm going to have to use that tiny ass thing. After going to O'Reilly's and Advance Auto, come up with a solution that won't allow the brake booster hanging or the master cylinder hanging over the wall and into the hood and that is not using the Chevy 2500 brake master but instead this everything else is still the same that is off a early Chevy S10 so 87 to 94, something like that. I'm not even positive. But that fits, same bore size. And one thing I wanted was these to be pointing this way. That way I can break my, make my brake lines come down instead of wrapping it around this way. That's one thing I wanted. So I got everything I wanted. So now we got to make the pin it goes in between the two because that doesn't come with one. So I got a custom, come on. I got a custom cut the pin that I bought to fit in there. Now that we got the engine and transmission bolted together, I'm going to do yet another test fit. And this time, I'm doing the test fit so I can make the transmission bracket. So you see I cut out quite a bit more all the way up to the beginning of the hole to see if uh, that's going to make a fit. I'm going to do another test fit. You can see I'm using a jack back there to jack up the tail end of the transmission. So let's see if that does anything. If not, I'll pull it back out and cut some more. As I'm putting this in, be careful of your map sensor here does want to hit into the firewall so remove it first before you uh, try to put this in. I made the cut and it was enough to clear me at the bottom so now I think I just got to put it down. You can see I'm directly over top of it. What we got to do is put it down and line everything up. So I cut it in half. I'm not gonna do any kind of welding on it yet. Cut the little piece off the back side. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over and see if I can loosen this up a little bit. Kind of do a test fit here. Again, just just preliminary. That goes there, that goes there. 
and it looks like I got clearance all the way around. Perfect. No issues there. I'm going to have to cut more, I think, on this side possibly. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to cut some more on this side. So, with the transmission cross member, I took what I had and modified it to make it fit. So, I needed to get the pan off with the trans uh, the cross member in. So, I did a little notch here, fully welded it all back up afterwards. I had to cut right here in order to get my uh, shifter cable to go through fine. I had to completely modify this. This was a this was a pretty big issue to get that to work, but I got it to work. So prepared. This is like an eight-hour modification. Way way longer than I expected, and uh, I think it would have just been faster. Make a brace go all the way over. Instead of trying to cut, modify, fix, cut, modify, fix over and over and over again. But it's done and just want to show it. It can be done using with what using what you have. So moving on to the crossover pipe. The crossover pipe that I bought, uh, $250 will not work do not waste your money on it you will have to make your own custom pipe it comes down over i wanted to sit like right here and then come back up into there right here the frame is already kind of notched a little bit so i kind of wanted to sit this angle <clears throat> if we can then come down and around but i don't have a pipe bender so this is going to be quite unique how I'm going to do this. When you build your crossover pipe, you want to make sure, one, you have plenty of clearance. And two, when you start building it and welding everything together, make sure that everything is tightened down before you move on to the next pipe. Because if you're not tightened down and it has a little bit of wobble into it, guess what happens? It doesn't line up correctly afterwards. So, I got my first pipe cut and you can see the tape right here. Put a little bit of angle on the dangle, and uh, yeah, now it's tight. We're gonna move on to the next piece. When making my pipe, I'm only tack welding it, and you know, like I said, tighten everything down. You can still turn it a little bit to try to get where you need it to go perfectly. And I got it halfway done. This side is looking fantastic. Now I got to work on getting it from there to here. All right, there we go. Plenty of space all the way around. Not gonna be hitting anything. Looks absolutely good. And I'm still gonna put header wrap on it just to keep it away from the oil pan, keep it away from the uh, torque converter. But yeah, that wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Once you get your cross pipe made, you might notice I don't have a bendy flexi pipe in it because the way I made it, I can get it in and out without it hitting the sides with no issues. So now you have to work on getting it wrapped so it doesn't burn anything else up. So that's what I'm working on now. Alrighty, we got it clamped up there, runs around, everything looks good, fully assembled, crossover pipe is now complete. After removing the power steering pump and the alternator, I am about to build up the new bracket, which is ICT, and it relocates everything over to a different position. So, unfortunately my stand is broken, my help is gone, so it's just gonna be pause and record, pause and record. Well, after I get the bracket all bolted up, only to find out that it can only be used with a LS1 power steering pump. Nothing else. And I am using a Hydro Boost power steering pump. So, yet again, 
this one will be sent back.